Now, what even was yesterday's game last night? I mean, this game was pretty crazy, and to be honest, I'm so happy that it was made live on YouTube from the club, and I'm hoping that more games do get covered live on YouTube. But what did this game not have yesterday? It had the return of our legend in Petacek. Of course, it had goals, it had moments, it had passion, and it had a crazy melee that involved Danny Drinkwater getting sent off. Big man Danny at over 30 years old, kicking out at a 17 year old so <laughs> it was definitely entertaining it was definitely worth watching and i'm going to break down how big pete did i'm going to break down the game and to move on afterwards i'm going to move on to the second story covering tamori and a potential low move to leeds this january so i hope you guys enjoy before i get into anything though i want to say a massive shout out to etoro for sponsoring blue lines tv now, I'm sure you guys have seen eToro adorning many sponsors for many Premier League clubs without knowing exactly who they are. eToro essentially is a global investment platform where you can invest in everything from stocks, currencies and commodities, and cryptocurrencies too. Now recently, eToro released a survey to get a better understanding in regards to how fans are coping watching their teams from home during lockdown and the results were quite negative. 75% of fans revealed in the survey that they are not happy watching their games at home with a further 73% stating that due to so much life and home distractions, it's affecting their love and enjoyment watching their teams. Now I'm sure we can all relate to experiencing these frustrations at times during lockdown. It is what it is, but for anyone that's always shown an interest and has been curious and wanting to invest, eToro has the copy trader tool, meaning that whenever they invest, you make the same investment automatically at no additional cost. With the fact that eToro has a very supportive community where you can get free educational courses where you can connect, share, and learn from experienced investors, now is the perfect time to test out your curiosity. You'll find all the relevant information in the description below and click on the link in the description too. Now, when I tell you that last night's PL2 game versus Spurs was lit, it was sick, it was entertaining, it had everything and I'm praying, I'm hoping that from now on, after how the stream just banged on YouTube last night, that we're going to start seeing more games for our academy on a regular on YouTube because I really feel like there's such a massive audience that wants this. And it's a great opportunity to see the next youth to blow and to come through. But anyway, last night's game obviously was going to be dominated by Wondergood goalkeeper Petr Cech. And to be honest, I think you guys might be wondering, Nini, why exactly was Petr Cech playing in yesterday's game? Now, I'm going to give you guys a quick explanation. And of course, COVID plays a part in regards to why Petr Cech was even involved in the first place. Now, to let you guys know very quickly, due to COVID and clubs need to follow the strict guidelines, it does mean that now players can't train freely between the age groups. For example, look at Tino Andrin. Now that he's with the first team bubble, now that he's training with the first team, he can't now train with younger age groups. He has to remain with us. And due to how life is right now, it does mean that some unique situations can arise. And I have to give massive credit to the club for having that foresight to just keep themselves protected on all front. Now, Big Pete was registered as an emergency goalkeeper. And the reason for that was that two reserve goalkeepers, Luca Bergstrom and Carlo Ziga, were not able to take part in yesterday's game. In the case of Luca Bergstrom, of course, you know, he, in the case of Bergstrom, if he had played last night's game, that would have been two games in three days. And based on the advice of coaches and staff, that was something that they weren't willing to do and willing to risk. Now, in the case of Carlo Ziga, it's the same situation as the Tino Andrew example. With Carlo Ziga, he's now training with the first team bubble and most likely he's going to remain with the first team until the season ends due to these COVID guidelines. So this meant that there was a rare opportunity for Petr Cech to get game time in yesterday's game. Now you guys know why you're here. You want to know how Big Pete did in last night's game. To be honest with you, it wasn't the best. And <laughs> is that really a surprise when he's been out for nearly over two years? I don't think so. And literally from the kickoff, he makes his first mistake, which is followed by the second mistake and then a third mistake later on in that game. So with the first mistake coming right from the start of the game, Miz kicks it, it goes out for a corner, and that same corner he gives away, then gets scored in the third minute by a Spurs youth player. And you know, you're just thinking, okay, maybe it's a slight bit of rust, but I'm sure that it's natural. Been a long time since he's been playing, and you know, he needs to 
warm himself up to get back into things. So literally 12 minutes later, Spurs make it 2-0. And I have to say, it was a great bit of play to create the opportunity. And it was a great diving header as well. I mean, I'll give credit for that. But at the same time, Big Pete, man, I'm seeing you in no man's land situations, making it very easy for the Spurs players and making it impossible for you to make the save. But uh, <laughs> you guys, I'm only playing like, you know, I'm a geek. I like to overly analyze and... You know, look for all the micro details, etc., etc. Um, don't take it too serious, of course. Just having a little bit of fun. But, um, of course, it's always a nice thing to see one of the legends from yesteryear making their return back to the team. And I think from now on, I need to just break down this crazy ass game from last night. So for you guys that missed out, you're now going to know what happened in yesterday's game. Now, basically, you know that from the first 15 minutes, we were 2-0 down to Spurs. And I have to say, massive credit goes out to our PL2 manager in Andy Myers, who came back from his uh, spell at Vitesse, just working and training with the coaching staff. He made one big tactical change. And that was turning us back into a 3-4-3 team. This way it meant that we had Liv Romento bombing forward as a wing back. And then we used George Nunn as our left wing back to give that shape and that balance. And no surprise that when we made that tactical formation change, it felt like the game was going back in our favour. And on top of that, both the wing backs were involved to get us back into the game. Now, to start with the first goal, this was some good persistent play from George Nunn. Now, he doesn't tend to really play as a wing back all the time. He tends to play further forward, but with players in our academy, they can play in a ton of different positions and different formations. So it's only natural that he can still do bits playing as a left wing back. Anyway, his persistence wins a penalty and upsteps Miles per Harris. For you guys that don't know, 18 years old, mid sensation, great technique, great power. He's improving and getting better every single time. Steps up and coolly slots that penalty in the back of the net. And the moment that goal went in, you just knew that, okay, okay, baby, we back in the game. And literally not too long after that, I have to say this goal was amazing. See it for yourself. And this is exactly why a lot of people in this fan base got high hopes for Liv Romento. I mean, did you see how perfect that play was? Did you see the first touch? The pace. And then you're thinking he's doing all of this at 100 miles per hour. And at the end, at the end, that composure to the play, perfect pass on the books, making it 2-2. Incredible play. And looking at Liv Romento, I mean, this guy's pace, his power, his strength. You know, his technique, his skill, and his crossing. Is there a possibility that we might see him get some game time as this season goes on? Because, wow, you know, Reese James, Differmento, we really produce some of the best fullbacks in the world, in my personal opinion. But anyway, to move on, the game takes a mad twist. A mad twist, and I think now is the time to actually break down this Danny Drinkwater incident. Now, you know what, yeah? I need to be objective when I assess this situation. Now, of course, of course, Danny is like 30, 31 years old, you know, getting sent off for kicking out a 17 year old. If you just read the headlines without seeing things, then it might paint a little bit of a different picture. But here's the thing with how football works here. Yeah? If you're an older senior player, especially if you're like doing something slightly degraded, I guess, and you're playing like for your PL2 team, if a younger tries to move to you, tries to kick you, blatantly disrespects you and like tries to embarrass you, especially when it's a two-footed tackle lunge. It wasn't just like no normal little like kick out or flick. Then, and I have to be fair, I can understand the human reaction to just instantly lash out because we've all kicked ball before, we've all played sports, we've all competed. Sometimes it just happens, you know, you'll just react because in the moment, this is what happens. I'm sorry, but um, of course, at the same time, of course, because we can always elevate ourselves and be better. You're thinking maybe Danny, you know, you could have maybe reacted differently. But even thinking about that, what would you do in that situation? Do you retaliate and just obviously get sent off and get embarrassed anyway? Or do you just stay down holding your ligaments, clutching at them and wait for the referee to sort things out? Embarrassing yourself anyway, because of course, you know, you're... Because you're on the floor after getting kicked by a younger. So <laughs> it's literally a lose-lose situation for drink water regardless. And to be honest, I'm not going to hold this one against him. It's what happens. But anyway, the game goes down to 10-10. This melee man on for time. Uh, people were throwing balls, pushing left, right, center. The man were getting booked. And of course, 
you just knew that after all of this, one team was going to prevail, and that was going to be us. Now, again, I told you guys about Miles Putt Harris. He gets the winner, and, you know, I love the finish. I love how composed it was. I love how he went for more of a place accurate shot that, of course, had power on instead of just like blasting it randomly. You know, he's been known for having a very good shot, and <sighs> this guy's another impressive player. And I'm hoping from next season he gets a good long move so we can see what he's fully about playing men's football. But there you guys, that was basically the breakdown of the crazy game that happened yesterday. I'm sure everyone's got their thoughts and opinions. But now it does seem like Tamori might be a player that is on the move in this January window. Now reports have come out today from Football Insider suggesting that Leeds United are now strongly considering Tomori as an option for a loan move. Now with Leeds it was quite interesting because Bielsa came out only a few days ago saying that yes, yes Robert Koch is out but we are stacked with defenders in our team. I'm going to rely upon them and we're not going to be in the market for another defender. Like, you, you read these quotes sometimes and you just know it's just utter BS. I mean, of course they're going to be in the market for a new defender. It's, it's the standards, uh, they want to stay up in the Premier League and they can't afford to go down. And they need PL quality defenders to help them stay up. So in comes Fikayo Tomori because, of course, their big money centre-back signing in Koch, who was signed from Freiburg, he's out with a knee injury for the next three months. Now, is it really a surprise this was going to happen? Because when Leeds signed him, he already had a little niggly knee issue to begin with, so it seemed like it was further exasperated, you know, playing Premier League football, to be honest. So the question now is, would a Tamori long move to Leeds United be the best move to make? I think potentially, and I think that in situations like a January window where your options are limited, game time is key, game time is important, and quality of game time is the most important thing. Under Bielsa, due to the football that Leeds play, due to how they play out from the back. Of course, this is an opportunity for Tamori to play proper football, learn and grow. But at the same time, it's also a Leeds United team that will let in goals for fun. And if you're Tamori playing for a back line that will get no protection at times from the midfield or from the uh, attacking players not pressing properly, you'll become an automatic scapegoat because everyone still thinks that whenever you can see goals, it's exclusively a defence's fault. So. It's definitely something for Tamori to consider, but at the same time, he could look towards Ben White and how well Ben White did on loan at Leeds last season. I guess the only difference is was that Ben excelled in the championship where, of course, you're going to look a lot better and stronger because Leeds obviously got promoted. So, I don't know. I think that if this Leeds move was a last resort, like desperation type of thing, then yeah, I would understand him making the short-term loan move to Leeds. I think that getting PL minutes and time is good. I guess for me, I'm hoping that if Leeds are showing interest, hopefully other clubs, especially some of the links coming from Europe, they get more concrete, they get stronger, and Samori gets a good loan move where he gets quality game time and quality minutes. Very unfortunate that he could not get that loan move to Everton. I mean, can you imagine him working under Carlo Ancelotti playing week in, week out? Ah, uh, it's like sometimes we have to think about the long term, you know? When we knew there's a real situation that we could really be left with five defenders by the time the window ends, should have got rid of one of the easiest players in Tomori to let him grow, learn and get those minutes because this is where it gets frustrating being a young player at a big club. People will call you out for, you know, not fulfilling your potential, but, you know, due to the pressures and... Uh, responsibilities that happen at the very top. You know, sometimes you just can't afford to take a risk on giving a young player a chance that probably needs at least five, six games to really show what he's about. So very unfortunate, very unlucky, but if I'm Tamori, I'm not taking this personally. Time to get some game time and come back stronger. So you guys, that was the news for today. I hope you enjoyed. Please like, comment, and subscribe. I'm Nini FC. This is Blue Lions TV. I'll catch you guys later with some more videos.